Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about Jupyter Lab. You know, I've been using Jupyter for many, many years already, and it's an amazing tool, amazing tool for me when I'm teaching and also when I'm playing with and developing software, trying to understand a new concept or see what's going wrong with some of my code. Well, Jupyter Notebook is fantastic, but the next generation is known as Jupyter Lab. And I want to show you how to start it, how to use it, and how it's a little bit different. So I'm here in a directory in my terminal, Jupyter Dir, um, and I'm going to type here Jupyter Lab, not Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab. And that's going to open up now in my web browser. It takes a few moments, think, think, think. Here we go, and it opens up Jupyter Lab, which is a different kind of interface. You'll see the spinning planets and so forth. And here we see the launcher. And already you can see that there's a whole bunch of different things here. Rather than the notebook, where it used to show you just a list of the files in the current directory, now it shows you on the left, well, a list of files in the current directory, but it's an empty directory. On the right, then it shows you, we can launch a notebook. We're going to do that in a moment. We can launch a current, uh, console. We're going to do that in a moment. And you can launch some other things, which we will also do in just a moment. And along the top here, we have a menu. We can do file, edit, view, run, kernel, tab, settings, help. We actually don't need those right now. We'll get to some of those in a little bit. So let's say I want to launch a Jupyter Notebook just like I did before. Well, I click on Notebook, and you'll see it starts up a notebook just like before. And I can do all the things that I have been doing in Jupyter Notebook for years and years and years. Where I can say for i in you know, range 10, print, you know, hello, i, something like that. It works just fine. I can use all the magic commands, so ls, and it'll show me all the files in the current directory. Okay, nothing too exciting here, except what if I want to start a new Jupyter Notebook? Well, I can do that. I can say file, and I can say new notebook from this here. And now I can select which kernel I want. I have a whole bunch of different options, including Python 2 for like you know, old school stuff. So I'm going to select Python 3 here, and now I have a new totally different Jupyter Notebook. Could I have done this before with Notebook? Yes, I absolutely could. But then it was each of the notebooks was in a separate tab in my browser. Here it's in like a mini tab or a micro tab within this one browser tab. So I can switch back and forth between these two different notebooks, which by the way are running different Python kernels. So if I say here x equals 100, and then I say print x, okay, so far so good. Well, if I spell correctly. But then I go to this other notebook and I say, hey, show me the value of x. x is not defined. These are completely separate instances of Python unrelated to one another, but it is handy to have them around here in the same window. And you can see then that the file list on my left is growing as I start these notebooks. What if I want to rename it? Well, I can right click on this mini tab here, choose rename notebook, and I can say fantastic notebook. And then I can right click here and I can call this, you know, even more fantastic notebook. Well, I think fantastic should come before even more fantastic. So I'm going to slide it over there just by clicking and dragging. And sure enough, that works just fine. What if I want to restart the kernel for whatever reason, right? Some of you might be familiar with doing that in the Jupyter Notebook. Well, I go up to kernel and I can say interrupt. That's what I've been doing for years to just sort of do a control C or I can restart it completely. And then I can restart and all is good. So far, this looks an awful lot like what we've already done before, albeit with a nicer interface. But what if I start here a new launcher, right? This is another one of these mini tabs here. I'm going to put this on the left. And I don't want to start a notebook. I can start up a console. What does that mean? Well, some of you might remember that in the days before Jupyter, we used the Python text-based REPL, read, eval, print loop. Um, and there was the Python interactive shell. And before Jupyter came around, there was something known as IPython for interactive Python, which is fantastic for doing these sorts of things. Well, guess what we just launched here? We launched IPython. So if you don't want a Jupyter notebook, but you do want interactive Python, you can do it right here. I can type things. So I can say x equals 100, right? And I'll execute this. I'll say print x times 5, something like that. And we can then see the inputs and the outputs. It's not interactive like a Jupyter Notebook. I'm not sure why someone would really want this, but it's definitely around. And if I'm done with it, I can close it. OK, what else might I want to launch? Let's start a new launcher here. I can also open a terminal window. 
Now, this might seem kind of crazy. Like, why would I want a terminal window? And here we go. We've opened it up. I can do an ls. I can do, you know, pwd. I can do all of my standard Unix commands. This is, and it's a little mind-blowing when you actually think about it. In my web browser, I now have a terminal running on my, well, this is my iMac here on my Mac. And I have full access to the terminal, including all permissions of the current user. That means if I'm running a server somewhere with Jupyter, and it's not password protected, and someone just happens to come upon it, they can create a terminal, and then they can execute things with those permissions. Not a smart idea. But in my case, right, I'm writing on my own computer here, this gives me an easy way to access the command line rather than having to go out of Jupyter to the command shell, right? I'm right, right here. I can run things, I can play with things, I can, you know, test things. Let's say I want to run PyTest. Right, so I can run PyTest right here. Let's say I want to create uh, HTML versions of my notebooks. I can do that right here. And you have full access to the shell, right? So if I do a control R here to search backward in the shell, I can do that, right? I can say here, I don't know, um, you know, I don't know, uh, LS, right? I can look at, here's how I sometimes update packages. I can do control C, right? All the things that you would normally do in the terminal, you can do right here from within your web browser. Kind of crazy. Let's start another launcher and I can edit a text file. Okay, I might want to do that. I can edit a markdown file. Okay, I might want to do that. Here's something I actually do. I can edit a Python file. That's right, I have a tiny little Python IDE here that I can use to run things. So I can say here, you know, name equals, oops, name equal input, input, enter your name, strip. And then I can say your print, hello, name. Okay, and this is, of course, a fantastic little program. I'm going to rename it to say, I'm going to call it hello.py. Fantastic, and now in this current directory, I have my fantastic notebook, my even more fantastic notebook, and hello py. Well, how am I going to run this py? Well, I'm not going to actually see a way to do that from here. But if I go back to my terminal window and I do an ls, look at that. I've got hello py there, and I can say python3 hello.py and run it. So I say Reuven, it says hello Reuven, fantastic. If I want to go back here, I can do that and I can add the, the shebang line here. I can save that and now I can run it again without even having to say Python 3 explicitly. And of course, it's not going to change the permissions. Right, I'll fall back with that. And now I can run it and all is good. That's still going to say hello to me. So this is one of the ways, or these are some of the ways in which Jupyter Notebook is different from, or Jupyter Lab is different from the Jupyter Notebook. It's more flexible, it's more modern. Could I have used a terminal with the old Jupyter Notebook? Yes. Could I have used an editor with the old Jupyter Notebook? Yes. But there's way co more convenient available, and with these mini tabs along the top here, I can move much more quickly among the different things I want to do. There are also extensions and all sorts of other stuff. I'll get to those in future videos, but I hope this has shown you that in many, many cases, Jupyter Lab is indeed better than Jupyter Notebook. Give it a shot. Try all these things. Uh, let me know what you think. I'd love to see your comments. You can always reach me on Twitter. And of course, there's a free weekly Better Developers newsletter that I put out every Monday. I'd love to see you subscribe. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back more with lots more Python tips right here on this channel. See you soon.